Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would speak to us today. We ask that you would show us the truth of your holy word. We invite the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth to show us things to come. To testify of Christ, Lord, you said you come in the volume of the book. You say that the scriptures testify of you. Reveal yourself to us, we ask, we pray, and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you are enjoying this study of Abraham. I know that, that I am. Turn with me, if you will, to our last study of Genesis chapter 13. We'll be moving on after this. <clears throat> Quick background to what we've been looking at. Abraham made it into the land, and there was a famine in the land. He went down into Egypt. There in Egypt, he wasted his witness. He came up out of Egypt, back into the promised land. He built an altar, or returned to the altar, I should say, that he had built previously called on the Lord. There was strife between him and Lot, and then they parted and went their own way. After Lot chose, the Lord told Abraham to lift up your eyes now and look northward, southward, eastward, and westward. And all the land that I'm going to give to you and to your seed after you. And after he tells him to look at it, after Abraham sees it, God tells him to do something interesting. Look at verses 17 and 18. That's going to be our focus today. God says in verse 17, well, let me just read verses 14 through 17. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot had separated from him, lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward, eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Verse 17. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. And Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and he built there an altar unto the Lord. God says to Abram, Get up. Take a walk. Walk through the length and the breadth of this land that I have promised to give you. The title of our study today is A Walkabout. A walkabout. Now, historically, the term walkabout refers to a rite of passage for indigenous male Australians. It's a journey into the wilderness up to six months. From the ages anywhere from 10 to 16 years of age, and it's a transition into manhood. Now, the term became even more well-known with the, the movie years ago, Crocodile Dundee. He talked about going on a walkabout. The idea
itself of what the real situation, the lie of the land, if you will, is. David, during his early years when Saul was, was always on the move trying to, to find him, he, he would hide out in what the Bible calls the hold with his men. The cave of Adullam is where those men began to to come to him. And, and they, would, they would live in these rocks and caves and they knew this land and with the help of God and knowing and understanding the terrain, Saul never could catch David. David becomes the king and the Bible tells us that he, be, he increasingly expanded the territory of Israel, conquering more and more land, driving the enemy further and further away. God says, Abraham, it's, it's time for you to take a walk. It's time for you to move from where you are and explore and experience and study and examine what I've promised for you. There are Men, Christian men, who have no idea what they have in Christ. There are people who have been saved for long periods of time and they know very little of what the Bible has to say to them. And we call it the Bible. It's God's Word. It's what God has said to me, to you, to us. And it's a shame, really, because Abraham could have stood there and thought, Wow, I didn't know Lot was going to pick that well-watered well place. I'm kind of stuck here now. I've gave him my word. He could have begun to doubt and question and wonder. God speaks to him and says, Here's what you need to do. Now that you've looked, now that you see what I've promised you, it's time for you to get out there. Get in it. Explore it. And I believe today God is saying the same to you and to me. You've heard my promises. You've heard what I have to say. You've heard the preacher, the Sunday school teacher. It's time for you to arise. Take a walk. Through the breadth. Through the length of the land. If you're unfamiliar with what God has for you, what are you waiting for? If you have questions, what are you waiting for? If there's still a longing within your heart, within your soul, of more of what God has for you, what are you waiting for? Now, if you're waiting on the Lord, that's okay, but if the Lord's waiting on you. That's not okay. You need to arise. And you need to go forth. You need to explore. Experience. Study. Examine. Turn with me. There's an interesting passage of scripture found in Ephesians. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3. Where Paul is actually praying... He's pinning his desire for those believers in Ephesus. In Ephesians 3, <clears throat> starting in verse 14 through 21, he says this, For this cause I, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love, notice this, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and depth and height. Abraham, arise, walk through the land through the length and the breadth of it, that you may be able, Paul says, to comprehend, to know for yourselves, to experience with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, 
that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Paul's prayer was that the believers in Ephesus, like you and like me, would experience the same type of experience that God says to Abraham, Arise, walk through the, the length and the breadth of the land. I want you to see and understand. I want you to have first-hand knowledge of these promises that I've given you. Not only was it Paul's prayer, in First Chronicles chapter 4, there's an interesting man and a long list of names in a genealogy. His name is Jabez. I just want to read a few passages there, verse, verses 9 and 10. It says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Now, we've already been told in our study that God blessed Abraham. Abraham was already blessed, and spiritually and even physically, he's, he's beginning to be blessed. But it didn't stop there. Nor does Jabez stop praying. He just doesn't say, Lord, bless me. Notice the next thing he says. Bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, my territory. Enlarge my territory. I don't want to just stay where I am. I want to expand. I want to explore. I want to experience what you have for me. Enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it might not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. God answered his prayer. God will answer Paul's prayer. It's his desire for you and me. Paul said it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Jabez says, expand my territory, my coasts. I want to understand and know the fullness of God for me. I want to know that fullness. <clears throat> the psalmist in Psalm 16 says something very similar. Psalm 16 verses 5 and 6, David says this, The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance, and of my cup thou maintainest my lot. Notice he says, The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. He says, The lines have fallen to me. The, the, the land was divided up between the tribes of Israel by lot in Joshua. And David says, It's fallen to me in pleasant places. In order for David to know that it's pleasant places, number one, he had to know the goodness of God. Number two, he had to know what he had. It's good to have faith. God wants us to have faith. But he wants us also to put feet to our faith, to experience it. <clears throat> Not just to believe something that's out there, but to know something. Where we're like Paul, I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. He put feet to it. I, I, those lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. But one more passage of Scripture. In Isaiah 54, verses 2 and 3, says this, Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. God wants us to take a walk about, if you will, to explore what he has, to examine, to study, and to experience that. Get in his word, dig deep, study, expand your horizon. 
And in one place, David said, The Lord has enlarged my going, my place. He's, he's put me in a large place. God wants to do that for you and for me, just like He did for Abraham. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to the end of my life wondering, was there something else God had for me? I want to experience everything God has for my life. And I want to be actively seeking and searching, exploring and studying, expanding and experiencing, and allowing Him to show me all that He has for my life. Arise, Abraham. Walk through the land through the length and the breadth of it. He would say the same for you and for me. So it's time to take a walk about. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promise. We do ask, Lord, that you'd help us to know the height, the breadth, the length, the depth, to know the love of Christ, to experience the fullness of God. We ask that by your Holy Spirit at work within us, by the power of the resurrection, Lord, we ask that you'd help us to experience all that you have for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.